dare you? You disrespect the Western tradition. You disrespect America. You know nothing about the founding. Go home. Go home. Ho. Ho. Go home. In the coming days, I'm going to reveal that Marjorie Taylor Greene, in my summation and the summation of lawyers, committed a crime. That crime is going to be handed to the state of Georgia. And the state of Georgia will decide whether they adjudicate that crime or not. The House Ethics Committee and House Rules must expel Marjorie Taylor Greene when this evidence comes to light. Ho, go home. I am done with you. You are lukewarm. I am spitting you out of my mouth. You played me and no more. I was fighting and bleeding for this country, Marge. I came here before you. I will be here after you. Ho, go home. Go home, ho. Go home. Yo, I have no idea how I didn't heard that audio before, but there's Ellie Alexander there screaming about Marjorie Taylor Greene needing to go home. Yeah, that's older audio, but there's more going on. Ellie Alexander, in case you got to know, part of the Stop the Steal uh, rally organizer, a uh, close confidant of President, former President Donald Trump, and close buddies with a bunch of people that I'm about to mention right now. So there's drama going on. So, of course, this is happening. Oh, they fighting. Mama, they fighting. Let's check this out from Right Wing Watch. They pointed this whole thing out. Ali Alexander has admitted to soliciting penis pictures from teenage boys. Uh, this is part of this uh, whole expose that's come through. Daily Beast pointed this out. But apparently there was interviews going on as he's cooperating with investigations. And it turns out that he's had to admit to doing this. I'm going to read you just the first couple uh, you know, sentences, paragraphs here in the statement that was just up. Uh, this is what Ali Alexander said. This is too gay. While my audience is familiar with me battling same-sex uh, um, uh, 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 attraction, others aren't as familiar. I apologize for any inappropriate messages sent over the years. Over the years. Forgive me. While having repented before God and confessed at church, I want my supporters and those involved to hear my apology today. When I flirted or others have flirted with me, I flexed my credentials or dropped corny pickup lines. Other times, I've been careless and should have qualified those coming up to me's identities during flirtatious banter at the start. Nothing unlawful has occurred. And he starts talking about seeing these false claims and they've been cherry picking. And then, uh, you know, apparently there's some context clues behind him asking for penis pictures from 16, 17 year old, 15, I'm sorry, year old boys. There's different contexts to those things. But still, this is what he's apologizing for, which of course led to Marjorie Taylor Greene tweeting this. This is disgusting textbook predation of underage boys, and Nick Fuentes is in on it. Now it's on Nick Fuentes, and she even hashtagged Nick New. In exchange for recanting his accusation, Nick Fuentes and Ali Alexander offered to get him a job in politics. She's speaking specifically about one person that was detailed in his interactions with Ali Alexander. So there was a bit of a quid pro quo for sexual favors to be given some professional opportunities. It's pretty standard stuff, but it's still disgusting, predatory, and in this case, pedophilia. Weird. Uh, L.A. Alexander, obviously, he rolls with people like Nick Fuentes, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, Marjorie Taylor Greene. It's odd how that works. All these MAGA types and the fighting is now going down. Hal Sparks points out some of these things after uh, uh, Marge then tweeted that as if she has nothing to do with it and that everyone else forgot that she has nothing, that she has everything to do with these interactions. So Fuentes is now facing some more backlash and partially from Marge from his own supporters over whether he ignored these warnings that Ali Alexander, his friend and ally, was allegedly soliciting these nude pictures from young men within Fuentes' movement. So maybe while he was moving around and campaigning with Nick, maybe Nick knew about it and he was like, you know what, we're trying to do something more hateful and disgusting. We want to talk about pedophilia with other folks, but we actually don't want to stop it within our own ranks. That's what's being uh, uh, accused of him by people like Marge and others. So where does Milo Yiannopoulos fall into this? He began exposing all these things. Some of the stuff came forward. Maybe that's why Alexander decided to uh, confess. And he said he's doing it because they had a falling out over this whole grift back and forth over the Kanye West campaign for president that everyone knew wasn't going to go anywhere except for these three idiots. And now they're caught in this tornado. So Kanye did one thing, right, as far as the whole thing. Let me give you one particular uh, exchange that happened and that was revealed in this Daily Beast uh, piece. 
This is an interaction with one Aiden Duncan. In 2017, Aiden Duncan, who was 15 years old, he was from Colorado, he was interested in right-wing politics. He sent Ali nude pictures after Ali, uh, he asked him for them. That's according to an account that Duncan gave in March of this year. In a September 4th, 2017 exchange about an upcoming trip Alexander was planning, he purportedly told Duncan he would introduce the teenager to Milo and speculated about whether the boy would be Alexander's, quote, arm candy and suggested that the boy would have to be entertaining. And he said, rolling with me? Mostly, I'll have an entourage. Depends, huh? I mean, depends if it's me babysitting you during the day, then no, I don't have kids. If it's something more entertaining, then maybe. All depends on what we're up to. No matter what, I'll let you meet Milo. There's probably five people I'll introduce to him, but who will be my arm candy? The one with me always in VIP in and out. Well, that is to be determined by the by the boy who plays his cards the most correct. There's so much more going on here, but just that interaction there and talking about how he's soliciting this arm candy from a teenage boy at the time, 15, to go around and be entertaining rather than him having to babysit, apparently, for these uh, uh, possibilities of getting in on some right-wing politics. That's how you get introduced to right-wing politics. Then after you get introduced in this manner, then you have to start talking about how these folks that uh, are attracted to certain folks, you hate them. This is the basis for the Republican Party, apparently. Uh, So there's a little bit more. The fallout is now uh, coming out as we see these revelations come. Nick Fuentes went on Dalton Claude Felter's podcast. I hadn't heard of this guy before, but apparently he's pretty deplorable. But he went on his podcast, I believe it was today, to talk about the resolution to this whole problem. Watch. I talked to Ali, and he understands how strongly people feel and how strongly I feel, and he's bowing out of public life. So nobody has to worry about that. He's bowing out of public life, and... And I urged him to do that. So, you know, you're welcome. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just had some popcorn while watching this. It's great. So these guys are fighting over whether or not they're big enough pedophiles or supporters of pedophilia and whether or not they're the right, right-wing right guys and all these fights are going down. And you know what else Nick Fuentes then wrote after Marge has decided to come forward and really start burning these bridges? He said Marge Taylor Green is having her tweets ghostwritten by homosexual pedophile Milo and collaborating with the Daily Beast to smear me. What a disgusting pig this woman is. Oh, Mayor Mondale, they're fighting. I'm gonna let you talk while I finish swallowing this popcorn. (laughs) Man, I need some popcorn for this fight too. (laughs) Listen, who who cares about the boxing match, the championship match that's happening (laughs) this weekend when we got Republicans swinging like this? But let's be honest right here, right? First of all, there's a couple things at play. Um, The only reason uh, Marjorie spoke up is because both of these guys have been excommunicado from the Donald Trump's network, right? Nick Fuentes, who came out upset with Donald Trump. Um, and then also you got uh, Ali, who said that Marjorie created, committed a crime when she was supporting Kevin McCarthy's uh, candidacy for Speaker of the House. This is all this is about. This is her way to get back at them. She don't really care if they're pedophiles or not. What we're learning, though, about this Republican Party what we're learning is it was never about Pizza Gate. It was just about them projecting to keep people away from Matt Gates. I mean, from their gates, whatever they are, right? Because what we continue to see, person at the person, person at the person, we keep seeing these claims come up about folk knowing and also being okay with children being solicited for not just pictures, but also sex. This is an absolute problem that they need to deal with inside their ranks um, and not just those on the outside but also those in the party. And I think we are seeing a willingness from this Republican Party to sit next to anybody as long as you vote the right way. There's no platform for this party other than being loyal to the MAGA ideas. Not the person himself, just the far right ideas. Nothing is real with these folks. Listen, if you start talking about how you can expose someone for all their crimes and their misdeeds and their texts with young boys, That means you knew beforehand and you're withholding that information for what? Continue to access, continue to put possibility for power, money, anything like that. Last I heard, that's illegal. But they don't even realize that as they're going talking about how they're going to expose these crimes. Ali Alexander did. I think you mentioned this. This is what he tweeted. Marty Taylor Greene loved me until in December of 2022, exposed the fact that she committed a crime. What was the crime? And you exposed her. That means you knew about it. Why were you holding on to it, Ali? 
he said now she's trying to intimidate me and other right wingers with these smears and lies. So he goes to the same thing that they were talking about and how he's got receipts. How long have you had those receipts? Did they just fall into your lap once this whole horrible story came out about the things you were doing towards young boys? Still, there's more Mondale. There's other associates like Michael Cernovich, Jack Polzabiek, and also uh, um, um, others like them. Here's one. Uh, there's uh, uh, Cernovich. That's, that screenshot was used here by Michael Hayden. He's a senior investigative reporter and spokesperson for the Southern Poverty Law Center. And he pointed out how they have this connection here. Now, in having that connection, we know um, uh, Cernovich was a part of this trio of folks that was talking about Pizzagate and things like that. They've always pushed these types of, of uh, stories to get people to think, hey, I need to attack certain folks, go to this particular location, even continue to progress this hate. And now, when this is all falling apart, People like Cernovich uh, have this to say in response to this fallout. Again, they were they did work together. There's no denying that. So he says this: the alley behavior is inexplicable and inexcusable. I would remove him from leadership if he were part if he were part of anything I do, which he's not. He needs rehab and an exorcist. That's his solution. God can save his Im immortal soul, which needs to be his sole focus. People are trying to dogpile me via association. I don't give an f. These people disgust me and they don't even care about the issues of young men and boys being exploited. He just said that. It's a gotcha game to them. This problem is everywhere and it's demonic. Mondale, the projection continues. So it's everyone else that's using pedophilia and groomer uh, language as a gotcha game or as a political game or as a way to get ahead and fool enough MAGA minions to actually listen to the things they're saying. When in reality, you associate with these types of folks, you know what these folks are doing. If you're not doing it and you cover it up because you're still looking for more power and control over those same folks who you're fooling, that's what's going on. That's exactly what's going on. And, and the tragic part about it is, if we're being honest, is these people don't care. They, none of them care about the victims in this situation. They're only talking about, no one said anything about justice. If you heard the podcast, he said, I told him to get out of public life. Not that's not how criminal that's not how criminal justice works. Yeah. If you commit a crime, you go to jail. You don't just get out of public life. You go to jail. So there's nobody calling for justice in this real in a real sense. It's all about scoring political points. There will be a there will be an email from Marjorie Taylor. I promise you, within the next couple of days, raising money off of this very act because this oh. is what they do. It's a way to grift and also keep yourself relevant at any cost. Manda, you know you know we love a good prediction here. So yes. We're going to track that. We'll see how soon before Marge starts fundraising off of this or furthering distancing herself from these guys who are her buddies.